hosts and are not necessarily those of this station, its owners, management, other hosts, or advertisers. Show topics on this station may include conversations on any lifestyle, belief, religion, political affiliation, or other personal practices. KYND, a Synergy Broadcasting Company. Welcome to Natural Nation Network, the show that peels back the layers of confusion on health issues and gives you access to accurate information that can help you get off of medications, reach optimal health, and live your best life. Ready to help someone you care about change their life? Contact them right now. The conversation's about to get started. Here's your host, Oscar Hines. Good morning, Houston. This is Oscar Hines. Welcome to the Natural Nation Network here on KYND Radio. We are so delighted that you can join us at the uh, table once again for a veritable feast of conversation. I love it when uh, I have an opportunity to be in the studio with three gorgeous women. And I have, folks, have I told you I love my job? Have I mentioned that here lately? Because I'm just saying, you know, just, uh, just pinch me. You know, put a fork in me. I'm so done. But I get to have with me the, uh, the wonderful uh, Dr. Regina Bailey. And then joining us also are two attorneys, uh, Kyra Coffey and Eleanor Curry. Welcome, ladies. How are you all doing? Good, good. So happy to be here. Well, the first thing I want to do is tell all you folks to go to Facebook Live because, you know, if you're going to really enjoy the show, you've got to really <laughs> enjoy the show. It's good conversation. <laughs> but just saying, you know, I... Uh, I, I, I admit guilty as charged, but you know what I love is, uh, quite frankly, a combination of both beauty and brains. I think that is really the epitome, and right now my IQ is like going up just by hanging out with the three of you ladies, so uh, it's always nice to have this conversation, and you know, Dr. Cur Dr. Bailey, as a, um, as a uh, reoccurring guest, so to speak, we have an opportunity to mix it up with you and always learn some fascinating things, so We'll have a two-part discussion today, right? So the first part being some things on the medical side, and then the other being some things on sort of the mental and emotional elements. And then we'll invite, uh, we'll invite uh, our attorneys to kind of join into the work-life balance conversation and sort of engage that. But let's start out, uh, Dr. Bailey, if we could, with you and... Um, some interesting insights on uh, some things that happen. So on a personal level, I've had, uh, I've had this happen. My daughter uh, was uh, working out one time, and she slipped, and someone accidentally hit her with a dumbbell oh, wow. <laughs> in the head. <laughs> okay, And she's a smart kid. I was hoping you know, she'd be okay. But it turns out that there was a, uh, a minor concussion that occurred. And she didn't even know that, that that happened. So can you start out by giving us, first of all, an understanding of what a concussion is, and then uh, how do you know you have one, and, and, and how does all of that work? Sure. Um, so concussions uh, usually come after some kind of uh, blunt force trauma. Um, most commonly you hear about concussions occurring after trauma um, in some kind of, uh, like you said, like in the gym or in some kind of uh, physical ac activity, especially like in sports like football, Sometimes in a really rough basketball game, um, you can see concussions. Um, it's most likely um, when somebody um, hits their head hard against something else, sometimes another person, another player, um, the ground, a dumbbell, like in your daughter's case. Mm -hmm. um, and in a concussion, um, the brain is actually, um, when you have your, yeah, the brain has fluid surrounding um, the uh, brain actual tissue um, that keeps it cushioned uh, against the skull. Um, and the brain is shifting against um, that fluid and it sometimes hits the skull and that can cause some damage to the brain, um, they can cause some concussion symptoms and co concussion diagnosis. Wow. Now, I know this happens quite frequently with uh, football players. Yes, There's been controversies frequent. around that and boxers as yes, well. Yes, exactly. So, so, in effect, what's happening is you've got this, uh, this sort of uh, liquid that keeps, that keeps the brain in place yes. against the skull, and then it, it hits the skull yes, when hard. there's an impact. Yes, and then so, so the actual concussion itself, what are some of the symptoms when someone has a concussion? Well, the difficult thing with concussions is that they're very, very difficult to diagnose. It's not something that you can do a test for or do like an MRI or a CAT scan for. You're not going to see it on imaging. It's more diagnosed based on symptoms. Um, so some of the symptoms people see were um, having headaches, uh, nausea, vomiting. Some people will be confused after. Um, there might be some memory loss. Um, those are all things in the, in the short term that can be 
witnessed it with some kind of concussion symptom. So can c- confusion, memory loss, yep. is there like dizziness, nausea? Dizziness, that kind of nausea, vomiting, all those kind of symptoms. Wow, wow, wow. And then what is generally um, the time period or what, what should they be doing if, if they're diagnosed? I mean, what, what, just take rest, bed rest or what happens after that? Two aspirins call me in the morning. <laughs> what, what, what happens? It depends on the situation. Specifically for athletes, the most important thing is to, is to not to go back to sports immediately. Um, the very dangerous thing is with concussions is it's not necessarily with the initial concussion is if they go back into the game and get another concussion that can cause severe long-term effects and, and traumatic brain injury. So it's important to, if they do have concussive symptoms, to get out of the game and, and get some rest. Um, for uh, example, in kids, if they have uh, concussion sy- symptoms and they're involved in sports, it's important for them to stay away from the game, but also important for them not to be involved with video games and TV, a lot of things that are stimulate the, the eyesight and stimulate the brain very quickly so so this re-stimulation of the brain would actually further the damage or it further can. the issues yes it can yeah. really oh, wow. it's more of like giving the brain a time to rest and, and uh, heal wow 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 uh, and is there generally any permanent uh damage if someone gets hit in the head i mean if there's uh, obviously if it's severe enough yeah um well if it's a mi- uh, mild concussion usually there's no long-term um effects from it the problems do occur again and get with, with that second, they call it the second impact syndrome. If someone goes back to the game pretty close to the first injury, re-injures the, the brain again, those particular people can get long-term injuries. And those are, for example, um, the NFL has recently um, come up with an NFL concussion program to try to prevent these injuries because there have been quite a few players that have uh, had problems with and long-term uh, uh, brain uh, disorders. Um, and there's been a big lawsuit about it as well try to get them um, some kind of coverage and, and medical treatment for these illnesses. Correct. Because, I, I, you know, I remember when, and, and many of us have seen some of the vintage photos or vintage footage, I should say, of football games back in the 1930s. And these guys were just wearing, like, leather caps <laughs> on their head. And they were bashing each other's brains out, exactly. and it was, like, no big deal. And today, you know, you've got these super reinforced uh, uh, types of, of, of helmets that you wear. You know, I know I'm a, I'm a motorcycle rider, and one of the things that <clears throat> you learn pretty quickly in riding motorcycles is, A, obviously, guys, those of you that ride motorcycles, wear a helmet. I, definitely, I would, please. You know, I, I, I definitely I wear a helmet. Um, but what's interesting about the helmets is that if you drop it on the ground, there's a material inside of it that shatters. It's kind of like an impact material. Yeah. And once that happens, even though it looks like the helmet's perfectly all right, once that helmet has been, that material's been shattered, it doesn't buffer as it would in the case of a new you one. You don't have that protection anymore. Exactly. So I tell people never buy a used helmet. You never know if, yeah. you know, there's a little scratch or dent. Even if you drop it on the floor and that, pe- that, that impact shatters, you've got a ruined helmet. Exactly. So if it, you need it, you know. So, so then, so then um, in terms of actual recovery time, how long would it take someone to recover from a uh, uh, trauma like that? It depends. If it's a mild concussion, the person's young and healthy, it could just be a couple of days to a, a few weeks. It could be longer, um, especially if they, again, have gone, if not follow the doctor's orders and gone back to playing, gone back to, to, to normal life um, and haven't had a chance to rest, it can be longer, wow. longer symptoms. So are there, are there precautions? Are there things you can do other than the obvious to avoid? Yeah, <laughs> avoid like, the dumbbell. Hey, step one, <laughs> yeah. don't hit your head on dumbbells. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, the, the most important precaution is if, they're, if they're, someone is in, playing in the sport and they do recognize they're having some concussive system, symptoms is to get them out of the game. So it's important for education, to, uh, starting at a young age when kids are in sports, to let them know like, they shouldn't be embarrassed if they're having these symptoms. It's okay to come out the game. Um, they shouldn't, it's hard. A lot of, you know, you're, you're competitive. You want to win the game. You want to play. But it's important to save, save your brain pretty much. And if you're having the symptoms, you need to get out the game and rest. Um, some people have pressure from their teammates and their uh, coaches, too. They get back in the game. But it's very important to educate the community and the children and also the, the team, and as well as the coaches. That's important if you're having symptoms. You need to rest your brain so you don't get injured again and make it worse. So now, I, I don't know if there's any conclusive evidence around this, but many of us remember the great Muhammad Ali and how, of course, he took a lot of hits to the head over his career, and at the end of his career, he suffered from, I believe it was Parkinson's yes. disease. Has there been any established correlation between something like Parkinson's and uh, concussive? Yes, there impact? actually, it has been shown that quite a few um, 
boxers as well as a lot of uh, professional football players have been shown to have um, um, sim- uh, brain injuries similar to Parkinson's disease and other illnesses, long-term illnesses, similar to Al- Alzheimer's as well. Um, and it's been directly correlated to the trauma they suffered as through the years, through the repetitive concussive uh, episodes. Wow. And that's, been, that's why there's been this huge lawsuit to help, try to help these players out and to prevent it from happening to other players in the future. Yes, I know, I know, especially in football, that's been a really, really yep. big conversation. And, and, you know, the technology and uh, the helmet technology has worked. But, but to your point earlier, now, you know, if there's, any beha- if there's any symptoms, they're being asked to leave the game and yes. being evaluated. Yep. There's, there's even sort of a mandatory, I think, resting period. Yeah, there's a whole protocol. And, and if they don't follow the protocol, the NFL will fine a specific team for violating the concussion protocol protocol so they're trying to they're really trying to get tough with it and force it wow wow so are there any other things that we should know about uh concussions that we should be aware of as part of um understanding better how this affects us on a regular basis i'm more of just recognizing the symptoms initially and going to see a doctor right away to get evaluated so you make sure you can um, be followed and treated appropriately. Um, it's possible um, you might need, if you are, are having longer-term symptoms, you might need to see a specialist. Um, in Houston, there are actually quite a few um, actually um, concussive specialists um, that will follow um, specific concussion protocols, especially with athletes in the area and um, young athletes as well, um, and they will put them through a specific concussion protocol and, and um, follow them throughout their stages to make sure they're safe to go back to their sports. So there are quite a few good clinics, concussion clinics in the area. Mm. Now, you know, I recall we talked about dehydration uh, a few, maybe last month when you were on, Dr. Bailey, and uh, some of the symptoms you just described from concussions, it sounds similar to dehydration, disorientation, yeah. dizziness, yeah. nausea. So, again, is there, how do we know if, if we're dealing with one or the other? I guess the obvious is the, obvious the, if they the got dumbbell hit real, part. Yeah. 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 <laughs> They this, took a bad hit on the football uh, field or yeah. bumped into somebody playing basketball and they, you know, they passed out after or they're not acting strange, if they're acting strange right after, feeling real dizzy after the impact. Those are all signs that it's more of a concussion rather than the dehydration. It's possible it could be both too, wow. especially in the Houston heat and you're outside playing. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, sure. Now, I have a question for sure. you. Sure. I, I don't know. I want to know if this is true or myth. They say when you get a concussion to not go to sleep immediately after. Is that correct? That's or? more for for children. Um, sometimes okay. they want them to stay awake for a little bit, and make sure they don't throw up in their sleep and that sort of thing. Oh, okay. But for adults, it's not not as important okay. unless it's a very serious illness and they've been to the hospital and they're telling you to go ahead and watch them for a little bit. Okay. But otherwise, yeah. not not so important. That's 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 a very good question yeah. because yeah, you you hear that you know uh, don't go to sleep immediately. But let's let's uh, go ahead and take a caller, Doc. Apparently, you've got uh, you've got some interest right. on this uh, topic, uh, and then we'll ask the question and maybe take a break and then answer it afterwards. Uh, good morning, Rick. You're on the air with Doctor Bailey. Yes. How you guys doing? Doing great, good. sir. Yes, I got some. Well, I got some questions. I, I mean, I played football from uh, from little league to high school all the way to college, but I, I, I'll I've all well. I don't know when it started happening. Pretty well, I was like part in in middle school or high school, I would always start forgetting like simple things. And, and, and to now it has progressed. And I don't know if it came from concussions or not. And I'm only 50, 52 years old. And I just forget a little thing. I lost my car probably a couple of weeks ago for like three hours at the movie theater. Wow. And I was like, God, my wife, you said, how can you forget things like just simple things? But you asked me something to happen like 20 years ago. I remember. Yeah. Those are all things that could be related to having repetitive concussions throughout your your uh, career, your your um, athletic career. So I, if I were you, I would uh, go see your primary doctor about that and um, also ch- ask to see a neurologist. If you need to get a referral, ask to see a neurologist because they might want to um, do more investigation, might want to get an MRI on you and do some more testing because it sounds like it could be related to all of the athletics you participated in. So it's very um, important for you to see a specialist so they can follow you and, and uh, make sure they're not things that they need to watch out for and make sure it doesn't progress also. Yeah, do you have, like, a website you can go to? you have some doctors that you might recommend? Um, I would start with your health insurance company and, um, and start with your primary care doctor, and they can tell you specifically which ones are in your network um, and specifically ask for a neurologist to see. Yeah, I'm currently I'm a veteran also, so I use the VA a lot. Oh, okay. That's, well, that's perfect. You can go to the VA and then um, make sure you tell them specifically all the sports you were involved in and, and, um, as well, um, and they will get you in to see a neurologist at the VA. 
Wow. Okay. Good. Good okay. question, Rick. And we 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 certainly appreciate your service and uh, celebrated uh, veterans just yesterday. And and certainly the short term memory loss is endemic or, or system systemic of yeah. some of that 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 brain injury. So would be well worth uh, checking into. Definitely. And um, uh, stay tuned because uh, there are some natural things that we can also recommend that would be a supplement that you can in fact take to sort of improve that memory. So. Appreciate your call. Folks, you are listening to KYND Radio. Thank you, sir. And we are going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk life-work balance with our attorneys that are in the house. Remember to go to Facebook. Check us out there. We'll be back in just a moment. Liking the conversation? Tell a friend to tune in to KYND, the kind of talk that inspires change. Saltcrest, you have something special. You have greatness in you. Hello, my name is Les Brown, and I want to invite you to join me on KYND Monday from 9 o'clock until 10. It's radio that is designed to help you to live your dreams rather than your fears. A lot of people are talking about what's going on in the White House. I say, focus on what's going on in your house. We're going to teach you how to begin to overcome your fears, how to identify the goals that you want to achieve and make them happen, and how to begin to get negative, toxic people out of your life. You have something special. You have greatness within you. Listen to me Monday from 9 o'clock until 10 on KYND. You have something special. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. KYND. It's about connection. It's about community. It's about empowerment. It's about you. The kind of talk that inspires change. Connect now at KYNDradio.com. Welcome to KYND TV. My name's Lindsay Calzada, and I'm about to show you something crazy. <laughs> no, not that crazy. KYND Radio is bringing you something that's so crazy. It's inspirational. It's educational. It's generational. <laughs> no, not that kind of generation. Our generation. Your generation. KYND Radio is... You're listening to Kind Radio Station, KYND, inspiring the kind of change to help you live your best life. And we are back. This is Oscar Hines. You're listening to the Natural Nation Network here on KYND Radio. We are talking about the brain and the impact that sometimes can affect our mental processes and we're going to continue to talk about the brain but in a slightly different way here but you know what before we leave this subject i'm going to put on my health and wellness hat here for just a moment uh rick uh our previous caller mentioned that he had had some uh trauma to his uh, brain from some early sports and and many of us you know as we get a little bit older a few a little snow gets on the roof, you know, and of course I dye mine. This isn't my natural color, <laughs> ladies. Just saying. Yeah. So um, what happens is uh, we start forgetting stuff, and we often say, "Ah, oh, it's because I'm getting old." Oh, it's because I got CRS, and we won't tell you what that acronym <laughs> represents. But um, those things happen, and we sort of blame it on other things, but we never really attribute it to others. So, so Rick, I know you're still listening. I want to suggest a few things to you. Uh, you may want to start taking a uh, high quality high level omega 3 omega 3 with a high level of EPA and DHA you will see it on the shelves you'll see what the levels are DHA and EPA think of it like a lubricant for the brain it helps with the synaptic firings and it helps you to sort of connect the dots a little bit faster when you're trying to come up with a 
particular thing like, oh, where's my car after a movie? <laughs> <laughs> and then the other thing that I like is ginkgo biloba. Oh, yeah. um, ginkgo is another way that you can sort of supplement uh, and feed your brain. So any other thoughts, Doc? I wanted to mention those two in particular. No, I agree with those. They're both good with very um, no, little to no side effects, and they're both been shown to be great natural uh, uh, remedies and help for uh, memory issues. So yes. I agree with you. Yes, yes, great, great. So so, so good idea to do that, Rick. Uh, you know, before we start getting on a bunch of other drugs that may or may not be effective, I always like to suggest looking at a few natural things. Now, Let's let's switch gears a little bit because uh, we have we can have a little bit of fun with this conversation, um, <laughs> and uh, of course you know I I don't want to entirely say uh, how how crazy these two ladies thought I was the first time that we met, but uh, needless to say we were having fun. We were at a big conference, and I just thought they were fabulous, very very smart. Perhaps what we should do though, in the way of an introduction, is have you both introduce yourselves. You're both attorneys. And tell us a little bit about your practice and what you do, because you all are partners, too, which I think is awesome. Yes. Corey and I are two of the managing partners of Ace Law Group, based here in Texas. There are two other ladies um, that are partners with us as well. We have a focus that ranges from business to litigation to criminal law. It's a full-range um, law firm. We also have a business called Startup in Texas, where we make the formation, the documents, and all of that for entrepreneurs who are starting a business, very easy for them. Just go to startupintexas.com, and we'll take care of you. That's <laughs> awesome. I love it. I no, love it. And I love that we all pulled from different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So we have, you know, someone who was an educator before, um, someone who went the more criminal, went a criminal aspect mm -hmm. for legis um, getting, being a prosecutor. So we have people coming from various sides. I have 10 years of commercial real estate experience that I came from. Um, and I also have an MBA. So we all have these different go-tos that make our law firm comprehensive but very powerful in the fact that we really try to rally for our clients. Yes. Wow. Outstanding. Outstanding. Now, now, ladies, I know that, and uh, this has often been um, sort of a, a challenge, and we, we here at KYND, we talk about sort of uh, the motivational aspects of staying focused and staying positive. I know, you know, I've been in uh, three – three cities over the last two days, you know, I've been, <laughs> you know, I just got back to Houston and it's been, it's been great. I've had, had a <laughs> wonderful time and, you know, I still have my bearings. I'm, you know, I always have a few screws loose, but that's, you know, you found your car. I, yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> right. Exactly. I found my car by golly. Yeah. Um, so, so, so let's, let's kind of uh, touch on this idea of being successful attorneys and, and doctors. I mean, you know, these are, these are two of the traditional high powered careers that, we have here and how do you how do you balance that how do you how, how are you able to switch gears and go between those worlds because you guys you know we were having fun laughing and talking but as soon as you know you 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 hit a switch it was like okay now all the all of a sudden the iq levels just started kicking all right anyway, go ahead tell tell us about your work-life balance uh, approaches well i don't think it has to be something separate i think you just have to know how to define it and where it best fits in your life because I believe in doing everything well and doing everything hard. So when I work hard, I work very hard. When I play hard, I play even harder. <laughs> oh, I amen. play even harder. Yeah. Um, so, in fact, I have a blog. It's called Play Hard Playbook, and it's just about work-life balance. How do you be your best self? And I think when you walk into any situation prepared, wanting to be your best self, then you want to be the best whatever at whatever your profession is, but you also understand that you want to be your best you, and you are not just your job. That does not, that should not define you. You are a person outside of that, and you just apply yourself to that profession. So, And in addition to that, when you go somewhere, wherever you are, you're always your authentic self. So if you're not trying to put on a pretense of something else, you're able to f switch between I'm um, talking about business or we're having a lighthearted conversation because it's all genuine to you. So just go out there, as Corey said, be prepared, um, and that way whenever the conversation switches to something else, you're able to flow with it. Okay, so, but now let me ask you this, because here's a challenge that a lot of people have, and that is, you, you mentioned uh, just a moment ago, Corey, and I'm going to start calling you Corey now, so <laughs> that, you know, I, I, can, I can fall right in line, right? Uh, so, so you mentioned this idea of, 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 of just being who you are, but there's a lot of people out there 
that are trying to find acceptance. I mean, I almost look at it like the kids in the sandbox or teenagers with peer pressure. People are at work and they're, they're desperately trying to be accepted by other people. Speak to that for a moment. I mean, I think a lot of that comes from what people's perception is of what other people expect from them. And sometimes you have to let that go. You can only control yourself. I tell friends and family that, I say, I can barely control my children. So I certainly don't seek to control other adults with their own mindsets and their own preconceptions. So some of that is just having awareness of it and being able to dismiss it. You know, um, I walk into work, I have a, you know, I'm, I've been an attorney for four years, but I've been a professional for 15 years. So not many people can um, dispute that. I don't have an expectation. I can prove myself, but if you don't accept it, I can dismiss that. I can let you have your, your preconceived, you know, ideas. So I think part of getting that balance and understanding that you just can be yourself and you can't control how anyone thinks of that. Outside of that, that's all you can do. And I think some of that is just letting go, you know, being your best self, being professional, but you can't control other people's thoughts. And going somewhere where there's a good fit. If you're somewhere and you feel like you're having to force something and it's not really fitting with your persona, your personality, then maybe that might not be the right place for you if that's a job or if that's with friends or wherever it is. If you're having to force and alter who you are to fit within the situation, then maybe go somewhere else where you can freely just be who you are. Yeah, you have to enjoy yourself. You can't be miserable. Right. Or, right. Your yeah. whole life's going to be miserable. Yeah. Well, you know, I've, I've sat in a few boardrooms, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, when I thought people were utterly ridiculous, I wanted to maybe <laughs> drop the F-bomb or something. Yeah. <laughs> but, you, but you do have to. Yeah, you got to bite your tongue. Yeah. you gotta, you got to control that. So in terms of authenticity, um, you know, that's, that's a word now that's sort of gained a lot of traction. It's being used. It's being bandied about quite a bit. But if we could sort of drill down on what does it mean and maybe get from the three of you as professionals, in your own personal journey, what do you or how do you define your own authenticity? What does that look like? I think it took me to uh, hit 40 and after it before I kind of hit the um, stage where I didn't care what other people thought about me before, anymore. Mm -hmm. And it was more about my being happy and being myself. So that's my authentic self, just being myself and being happy and not caring about other people's opinion about me and what I do and my hobbies and activities and job and all that. Okay. Okay. Very good. Yeah, I would have to agree with that and just focusing on living the life that I want to live and going out and today, okay, this is what I want to accomplish, whether that be the goals for today or preparing for goals a year or five years from now, and being happy with the choices that I make because at the end of the day, it's my life and not someone else's. So I have to be at peace and happy. I mean, I'm not going to be perfect. You're going to be making mistakes, but you have to be able to forgive yourself for those mistakes and keep moving forward. But if there are mistakes that you made yourself without having someone pressure you into it, then I think it's a little bit easier to swallow and move forward. And I think growth, I think she touched on something important because I can also say in my 20s, I spent a lot of time doing what I thought someone should do. I thought a professional should do this. And so that's mm -hmm. the demeanor I, you know, accepted. I should, you have to have, you know, you can't have blonde hair. You have to be very strict or very um, uptight. This is what my perception was. So part of that comes from growth, and you just understand that, you know, one, you have to have some, be able to look back and say, you know, sometimes I didn't make the best decisions, but here's why. Sometimes I didn't make the best interactions with others, but here's why. So some of that comes from you really being able to examine yourself honestly and saying, here's what I want, here's what I can do to be better, but here is areas where if I did it, I wouldn't be being true to myself. Mm -hmm. Yes, wow, that's, that's good stuff. You know, one of my favorite quotes, I uh, believe it's Hamlet, uh, Polonius uh, was giving his son advice, and um, his son's about to go off on a journey, and he says to him, neither a borrower nor a lender be, but most important, to thine own self be true. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, I think that, that truth that resonates inside of us when we're no longer so preoccupied with the opinions of others is kind of what mm -hmm. I'm hearing mm -hmm. all of you say. You know, we, 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 we allow the external to define us mm -hmm. rather than the internal. Mm -hmm. But the beauty and majesty comes with that internal. And, and quite frankly, I think that makes a woman... Uh, in my opinion, more attractive when they have that self-determination and that confidence. I think that, that that projects beautifully. So uh, 
I don't know. You guys will have to say if that's the case with men. But <laughs> I'm just speaking on my behalf, right? Uh, okay, so, folks, this is good stuff. You're listening to KYND Radio. Uh, this is the Natural Nation Network. We are talking to three professional ladies about the work-life balance. And we want you to join the conversation by giving us a call at 832-230-5592. Also comment on your Facebook page and we'll be able to pick that up. We'll be back in just a moment. KYND is not just talk radio, it's interactive radio. Powered by JStream, the future of broadcast. Listeners now have multiple ways they connect to the conversation. Using a mobile device or computer, they are able to watch their favorite radio talk shows just like a TV program. They can call in during a broadcast, send instant messages as they listen live, or share a broadcast so all their friends can watch live on Facebook. You have something special. You have greatness in you. Hello, my name is Les Brown, and I want to invite you to join me on KYND Monday from 9 o'clock until 10. It's radio that is designed to help you to live your dreams rather than your fears. A lot of people are talking about what's going on in the White House. I say focus on what's going on in your house. We're going to teach you how to begin to overcome your fears, how to identify the goals that you want to achieve and make them happen, and how to begin to get negative, toxic people out of your life. You have something special. You have greatness within you. Listen to me Monday from 9 o'clock until 10 on KYND. You have something special. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. KYND. It's about connection. It's about community. It's about empowerment. It's about you. The kind of talk that inspires change. Connect now at KYNDradio.com. Welcome to KYND TV. My name's Lindsay Calzada, and I'm about to show you something crazy. <laughs> no, not that crazy. KYND Radio is bringing you something that's so crazy. It's inspirational. It's educational. It's generational. <laughs> no, not that kind of generation. Our generation. Your generation. KYND Radio is coming to YouTube. Now it's radio, it's TV, and it's your source of information. If you like what you saw, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Yo, what up, world? That's right, Carl Mays, King Motivator, KYND 1520. You better keep it locked, I'm telling you. From spring to sugar land, on the air everywhere, everywhere, the powerful 1520. And we are back. You are listening to the Natural Nation Network here on KYND Radio, helping you to live your best life, helping you to be authentic, real, and in touch with what is going on with your reality so you can shape and sculpt the trajectory of your life. So I, I love that subject. I love it so much. It is, uh, it is the sweet spot for me because it is where we really and truly resonate with why we're here and how we help others. And um, we're speaking with uh, three professionals, two attorneys, uh, Corey and Kyra, and then we also have Dr. Bailey in the house here. And 
we're talking a little bit about work-life balance, but, you know, folks, I started this out, and those listening right now, I encourage you to go to Facebook, and um, the reason I do is because you all are so gorgeous. This is this is overwhelming. You know, I'm trying to be cool about this, but it's it's getting to a point where, you know, I'm a little weak at the knees. All right, guys, so just let's, let's just... Let me just put it out there, right? <laughs> now, now, see, at this point I say that, and I'm, I'm, I'm a little tongue-in-cheek, but I see, I see you all politely smiling, right, at that, at that. So my question is this. There is a lot of times where men, because we're goofy like that, see beautiful women and then sometimes may make inappropriate comments, not, 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 not overtly sexual, but just inappropriate, because it's like they look at image before they look at, you know, your, your intelligence. Like if you were another guy or if you were, let's say, not quite as attractive as you were, they'd be like regarding you as a professional. But instead they're like, oh, I love your hair. Oh, I like that dress. Oh, you, your makeup is slamming today. And I tell you, you have beautiful eyes. Yeah. So all of that stuff, right? So let's, let's just address the elephant in the room, by golly, and there are no elephants here, but I'm just <laughs> saying, so, so how do you all deal with that? Because that's a part of work-life balance, too. Mm-hmm. And, and maybe you can give us an experience or two and then sort of how you manage to handle that. I think I have the opposite experience. I think um, I, when I'm in my scrubs and have my glasses on, people don't uh, know about or see the fitness side of me or the beauty queen side of me, and then when they, you know, see me my Facebook page, you're like, whoa, I didn't know you had all that on your scrubs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, because, <laughs> because we neglected to mention for those who don't know Dr. Bailey. She's a, she's a fitness, like, like champion. She's amazing shape, yeah. And, um, and sometimes in, in the dating world, it, it freaks some guys out. It can intimidate some men that aren't secure in themselves. They're like, whoa, that's a little too much for me. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, yeah. I would say, run in the other direction. Yeah. Those losers, you know, I, I just want to say I don't have any insecure bones in my body. Yeah. My I'm just putting that out there. Okay, no. <laughs> All right, see, I told you, we don't we, yeah. <laughs> let the games begin, right? Okay, so so what, what, do, you, what do you say? I think Ira? it's important that if co- certain comments are made that you don't just dismiss them, that you do address them. It doesn't have to be in a don't do, you know, in a certain way. But you can kind of, in a not so certain but still assertive way, let them know that hey, you know that's not cool, or oh, okay, yeah, don't do that. Again. You know, in a, in a polite but not so stringent type of way where it's you know messes up the whole di- work professional di- dynamic. But definitely, if comments are made, um, to address them from the beginning, and also to just be aware as a woman of your surroundings and how people are interacting with you, and. Um, Verbal communication and nonverbal communication can be just as strong. So just paying attention to little things because I think sometimes that there are little, somebody will push the envelope a little bit, then push a little bit more, then a little bit further. And there were um, instances where you could have redirected it from the beginning and it kind of built up to something more um, damaging. So just being aware um, and not being afraid to say something as a woman. I think sometimes we as women women may feel like, oh, well, you know, that's just how men are, or I don't want to say anything because then I'll be looked at a certain way. But no, like, you have the right to say something that, uh, against something that you do not like that said or done to you. So, I mean, I think it depends on if it's in the workplace or if this is just a stranger. You know, I true, definitely true. think you have to have different um, boundaries in these different environments. For me, I like a healthy banter. So if it's a stranger or we're in, like, a networking situation, um, there's certainly things that you can say to someone that may be unexpected that also subverts the conversation, but you can still be playful with mm-hmm. it. So I, I probably am more on the playful side when it comes to banter outside of the workplace. Um, but I think what Kyra said is, is very important to not be afraid to say when you're uncomfortable. And sometimes that's all you have to do to someone to say, hey, um, maybe, maybe we shouldn't talk about that or, you know, someone's calling you baby. I think often, especially in Texas, people get very friendly with, the uh, substitutions for your name. <laughs> so it's, yeah. hey, honey, baby, sweetheart. And you can say, hey, my name is Corey. I like <laughs> to be called Corey. And um, you can say it with a smile on your face. So the whole attitude, you don't have to have an attitude about it. You can just be direct and say, um, no, I, I, don't, I prefer to be called Corey. Or sometimes me, I would probably be like, all right, um, snookums, you know, or <laughs> all right, boo-boo baby bear. And then, you know, <laughs> then they're like, oh, don't call me that. Corey, let me, ch- <laughs> let me challenge that because, because – you, you know, you have a lot of great energy. I, I saw it when we met. It was, it was awesome. But, but are men, do men get that? Do they get that or do they say, oh, she's into me. Let me pursue this a little bit further. Or do they respectfully 
take a step backwards? Um, I think it depends on the man. I think there are certainly some men who are are dumber than a box of rocks. (laughs) Who are in pursuit. Um, And so the thing about uh, me personally is that when I get serious, I get very serious. So it kind of takes the air out the room when you say, okay. um, So a lot of times um, men will try to use your card or use a contact information Mm -hmm. as an end to something else. And then you say, okay, well, sometimes I just stop it by saying, well, my rate's $200 an hour. And they say, oh. (laughs) Oh, wait, a minute, wait, a minute. That, wait a minute, could that be misconstrued? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, not in that sense. Not in that sense, no, no, okay, no, of course not. But because you're an attorney, folks, for yes. crying out loud, let's get this straight. Okay, well, yeah, no, I get it. So, so, so most of the time it's really about setting boundaries mm-hmm. is really yeah. what, what you're saying to sort of set that perimeter so mm-hmm. that expectation isn't there mm-hmm. to, to, to go any further. Yeah, I think it's about um, setting boundaries and in Two, we talked about kind of perception, understanding who you're speaking with, because some people may be completely friendly about it, um, and it just may be their their personality. And other people, you know, may be trying to use those those words or um, that kind of proximity to you for different purposes. Yeah. yeah. So now, now, what about in the case? And I I sort of alluded to this with Dr. Bailey during the break. I said, you know, so the chief of surgery comes in and he says, let's take a closer look at that MRI, you know. <laughs> um, what about when your boss is, is there? I know you ladies are now self-employed, but you were in corporate America. Mm-hmm. There was someone at some point that had some influence, right? Mm-hmm. How, how do you balance that without, like, you know, the guy giving you a bad report or something? You know, if you were, say, working for Fox News or something. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to slip there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, just because, you know, Bill O'Reilly and no, all these yeah. other guys, you know. Okay, so so what about superiors? Is there a different protocol for them? I think it's important to be professional and say I'm not uncomfortable or this is inappropriate, and um, to make sure you document everything. And mm-hmm. and there's got to be somebody that's the boss of that boss, and make sure you inform them of what's going on that you're uncomfortable with the situation, and then save everything, document everything, what's going on. As a lawyer, I could not agree more. <laughs> <laughs> wow, your evidence now the is attorney. important. <laughs> now the attorney comes out, right? Yeah, so so doc- document. Documentation, yeah. whether that's emails, um, even if it goes so far as them sending you text messages, don't be afraid to save those text messages. Um, sometimes, even if they come in the office and they're um, inappropriate with you with their conversations, don't hesitate to record their conversation. It may not hold up in court if it goes that far, but it will definitely be substantial when you go to HR or if you have to file an EEOC claim. So definitely make sure that you're um, just documenting the situation itself. But if it is a superior of that nature, um, I would definitely say go to your, there is someone over the, over them, there has to be an HR department, um, but definitely say, you have to have set the boundaries or at least try to, and telling them, hey, I, you know, I don't feel com- comfortable with that, or, you know, just but making sure that you're protecting yourself, and as we mentioned earlier, you're not afraid to say when you're uncomfortable in a situation. Yes. And sometimes when she mentions things that are not, you can't uphold them in court. But sometimes people don't have a understanding of what they're doing and how it makes other people uncomfortable. So sometimes even just hearing mm-hmm. the conversation outside of being in it, if you replay it for them, they're like, oh, who said that? Right. <laughs> that was you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was you and it was inappropriate. Or um, if you transcribe it and they read it, how mm-hmm. would they feel if that was someone they were managing how would they feel? What would be their recommendation to that same person? So sometimes just that reflection can stop it. If you, you know, some, it's difficult to play that role, you know, because you don't want to lose your job or you don't want to feel like you can't progress in your job. I think that's why many women are silent about it. Um, so, uh, no, I, I agree with men, many women being silent about it and kind of having learned from a situation that I was in myself. I really do think that it's important because there are always signs ahead of time and there are little things or little comments made here and there that I think we as women just dismiss sometimes and I don't I think it's important that you don't dismiss those um those advances those comments whatever is occurring and just to be aware and address it when it when it happens and because if you don't nip it in the bud it's just going to keep right. happening to some other woman or someone else mm-hmm. yeah. yeah yeah and I think it's interesting what you mentioned Corey about transcribing because sometimes when you see something in writing mm-hmm. that's really different because, see, tonality, sarcastic mm-hmm. or playful, tonality changes context. But when you look at actual words, mm-hmm. now there is no, no tonality. There's just the raw words that is being said. 
So those are certainly things that we have to be conscious of. So very, very good information, I think, very good suggestions for ladies that are listening that may be experiencing some of these things. Your folks, you're listening to the Natural Nation Network here on KYND Radio. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to finish this conversation around work-life balance and how we accomplish that objective. We'll be back in just a moment. Fifteen twenty. Fifteen twenty. K Y N D. K Y N D is not just talk radio; it's interactive radio, powered by J Stream, the future of broadcast. Listeners now have multiple ways they connect to the conversation. Using a mobile device or computer, they are able to watch their favorite radio talk shows just like a TV program. They can call in during a broadcast. Send instant messages as they listen live, or share a broadcast so all their friends can watch live on Facebook. You have something special. You have greatness in you. Hello, my name is Les Brown, and I want to invite you to join me on KYND Monday from 9 o'clock until 10. It's radio that is designed to help you to live your dreams rather than your fears. A lot of people are talking about what's going on in the White House. I say Focus on what's going on in your house. We're going to teach you how to begin to overcome your fears, how to identify the goals that you want to achieve and make them happen, and how to begin to get negative, toxic people out of your life. You have something special. You have greatness within you. Listen to me Monday from 9 o'clock until 10 on KYND. You have something special. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. KYND. It's about connection. It's about community. It's about empowerment. It's about you. The kind of talk that inspires change. Connect now at KYNDradio.com. Welcome to KYND TV. My name's Lizzie Calzada. On the air, everywhere, everywhere. The powerful 1520. And we are back. You're listening to the Natural Nation Network here on KYND Radio. We are talking about the work life balance and how. Uh, sometimes women have to navigate that sometimes turbulent waters of uh, <laughs> but I but I will I will say this and one of the things that I can uh, uh, sort of attest to is as men your own personal demeanor and I learned this very early because I was the boss and there was a very attractive woman that was substandard performance and I put her on probation and she went to two female co-workers and she said I'm gonna accuse Oscar of uh, sexual harassment and I'm gonna ruin his career because how dare he do this to me wow. I've been doing well and you know the only thing that saved me she was trying to get those other two ladies to conspire with her this was some time ago but the only thing that saved me was the fact that I had I had treated the other ladies with such respect mm -hmm. and with such deference that there was you know so there was no question of my reputation and my behavior towards them so they said we'll testify against you how dare you even do that you know he would never do that mm -hmm. uh and and it was it was really reassuring to me to have someone come back and and sort of have my back like mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. because the truth of the matter is if those three ladies decided to conspire i was completely innocent but you know that would have been a problem so I would have had to hire an attorney, <laughs> and uh, that would have Ace been an Acelaw.com. Oh, yeah, that was a shameless plug. Okay, I got you. Acelaw.com. So, so, so now, so now, work-life balance. If we can go back to that, because you guys, I think you all nicely addressed this sexual harassment piece and and how all of that sort of shapes up in today's modern world. 
But in terms of emotional, physical, spiritual balance, and I'm going to be on a panel uh, coming up at the Black Expo, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell folks more about that, where we're talking about singles and professionals and, and, and that balance. How do you all balance that world? Because you, you don't always want to date someone that's in your profession or any of that either, right? I don't know if it matters or not, if you're going to talk shop for the rest of the day, you know. But I so had so many comments that flashed, I had to edit this now. Okay, all right. So what are, you, what are your thoughts? Well, I don't, it, it, what someone's profession is really isn't a factor for me. Because when I finish work, um, I finish. And that I've learned from being a parent. Because when you carry it over, you can spend your whole life thinking about, oops, I forgot to do this, or I have... 20 things I have to finish tomorrow, and you're not living in the moment. So I really just try to be present wherever I am. If I'm at work, I want to be tuned in to work. Um, so I really don't take, like, social calls, and I'm not a texter at work. But when I'm not, I've, I've learned to say, to say hey, um, I stop taking calls at 5, or I'll return your call the next business day. And so I try to not cross them over too much. Sometimes it's unavoidable, but I really do try to have, like, a – this is um, what this time is for me. So when I'm dating, I'm looking for the same thing in someone else, someone who's not kind of overly consumed with work because, as I mentioned, it, it's not what defines me. It's just a part of me. That's a good answer. I like that. When, I guess when people think of work-life balance, they often think of them equaling out. And I don't think that a lot of the times they're going to equal out 50-50. Sometimes you may give more in work. Sometimes you may have to pull away from work and give more in your personal life. So I think it's more important to have a clear alignment for yourself of what the priorities are um, comprehensively. And they all do fit together some type of way. And just making sure that, um, you know, everything that you're being taken care of first and foremost so that you can give the best to your clients and give the best to your family as well. I think that work-life balance will differ depending on where you are in your life. Like I don't have any children right now, so sometimes I will carry work over a little bit more into my personal life late at night. So I think it's just defining for yourself where you are in that time and what season you are and giving adequate time to the things that are most important to you at that time. Like if you're in a grinding season, you may have to put off, you know, right. <laughs> hanging out as it's much. It's about the grind. Right. So yeah. it's just depending on where you are in your life in that season and just making sure that everything is aligning to get you to meet your goals. You know, so, so I, heard a, um, I heard a speaker one time, and I, I like this, and I sort of kept, uh, kept it and, and, and took ownership of it in my own mind. Is it ba based on what you just said, uh, Kyra? And that is that um, life is really not about balance at all. Mm -hmm. It's more like a symphony. And if you mm -hmm. think about a symphony, you know, sometimes the stringed instruments are going to be pervasive. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the percussion is going to take over. Mm -hmm. Other times the horns are going to be the dominant, and you're going to go to crescendo and decrescendo, mm -hmm. and that's just a musician coming out of me now, <laughs> right? Really good. And so it's really about, like you said, what needs the attention? Because, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, Corey, if your children need some time and they need your attention, well, they're the priority right now. Mm -hmm. And now we shut off the text messages or the other, other messages, and mm -hmm. we just do that. Yeah. You know, So we have to sort of recognize that it is really not so much a balancing act as it is what needs our attention mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. to make it work. Well, I think often people think that, like, quality time, for instance, whether that's time at work or time with your family, they think that it's about quantity. When it's about quality, you don't have to spend four hours with your kid. But if you're present and you do something that everybody enjoys and you're interacting for an hour, that can be just as powerful, especially in a child's memory, than you just, you know, being home all day and you everyone's in their separate room and their separate spaces. So I think people sometimes say, oh, I've worked, I've worked very long hours. I went to law school at night, so I did, like, worked eight hours, went to school for four hours, studied for two more hours. And for a long time, I felt very guilty. But then I realized when I'm with my daughter, though, it's all about her. My whole focus is her. And that is comparable to someone who, you know, spends, goes home after work, but they eat, you know, dinner on the couch, and then everybody goes in their room. So it's just a different experience. Also, I've learned uh, not to sweat the small stuff. Mm -hmm. like, um, like, for example, I worked an overnight shift last night until this morning and got home and picked up my daughter from the nanny. And, you know, she didn't get to school until 10 o'clock this morning. And I was like, she's four. It's not a big deal if she goes to school late. I'm not going to worry about, oh, she's got to get to school by 8.30 or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some days if I'm off and, you know, she's like, I don't feel like going to school. It's like, oh, let's go to the board park, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you're, like, you're four. It's not going to matter if you miss a day of school. So I've learned not to s sweat the small stuff and then try to enjoy life in the time that we do have. 
free together. I think sometimes, like, we'll get caught up in, oh, you have to be here at this time, and just getting caught up on the routine of things, that sometimes you have to step back and say, okay, what's important to me in this moment? You know, and in that moment, it was important for you to get your daughter there whenever you got her there, but not to rush, and then you're all stressed out, and maybe she's stressed out, and just sometimes taking, taking a step back and saying, okay, what's important right now in this moment, and then just tuning out all the other background noise. Yes, you know, um, and not, not, I'm not saying truancy is great, but <laughs> <laughs> once in a while, a day off isn't going to kill him. That's, that's right. <laughs> well, you know, Eck, Eckhart Tolle, uh, a German author, wrote a book called The Power of Now. Mm-hmm. And what, what's interesting about that is it sort of relates to what you all are saying. Because, you know, when you say, Dr. Bailey, don't sm- sweat the small stuff, or you, you say it's not about quantity, Corey, it's about quality. I mean, completely agree. And, and sort of the beauty and majesty of life is, is really, really being present right now mm-hmm. in this moment. And I think so many times we're moving at the speed of life. Yeah. And then we, we fail to recognize that, that the journey is unfolding before us as we speak each day and the, the quality of our, our relationships and, and contacts. So, you know, I, I took my kids out the other day for lunch and just hung out with them. And they were just like, wow, is there an agenda? Yeah. <laughs> no. Other than clean your rooms? You know, right? you know. No, but, but you know, and, and that's really, I think, what, what adds the richness and depth and texture to our lives. Mm-hmm. Can we have a moment of silence? <laughs> <laughs> no, I definitely agree. Um, that's something that I'm personally trying to do more and more is just embrace and focus on what's important in the moment and enjoying the moment because you can't get it back. And sometimes, you know, you can make mistakes, but just brush it off, keep it moving. Because there are times where, like, what do they say? When you ask an elderly person, what do they regret most? It's not what they did, but it's the thing that they did not do. Yes. So just making sure that you're embracing and living the best life that you can live. Yes, yes. Well said. Well said. Wow. So, ladies, this time just, like, flies <laughs> sure by. Yeah. It happens every time to me. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm, not, I'm in the moment right now. Where's it going? <laughs> Talk yes. About. So, so, so let's have some contact information. We got a couple of messages came coming in uh, regarding uh, the corporate. How, how do if someone's ready to start a business, uh, Kyra? How do they get in touch with your law firm? So yes, you can visit us at startupintexas.com. And also, if you need any legal needs, feel free to go to acelaw.com. Right now, we're also running a promotion for a thirty-minute free consultation. So just feel free to go on our website and reach out to us. Yes, say that website one more time. Startupintexas.com and A-C-C-E law.com. Awesome, awesome. So, folks, if you're in need of some legal advice or you're ready to start a company, we encourage entrepreneurship. Give these fine ladies a call. They'll be able to help you out. And Dr. Bailey, fit and fine in no time. How do they reach out to you so that they can be sculpted and wear uh, scrubs? And <laughs> no. uh, Because I'll tell you, Dr. Bailey has an amazing, you got to go to her website. She has an amazing, amazing story. But tell us, please. Um, well, if you're interested, I'm actually giving away a free ebook now. If you go to www.fitandfineinnotime.com, you can get the free ebook and get more information about my weight loss program and supplements and um, protein shakes. And then you can also find me at www.drreginamdjd.com. And then I'm also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram um, with the same, Dr. Regina MDJD. Dr. Regina MDJD.com. Yep. All right, folks, you heard it here. We've been having a fabulous conversation with these ladies. We want to invite you back next week. We're going to continue the conversation about health, about wellness, about how you can start changing the trajectory of your life. And this is a conversation that is ongoing. I absolutely love it. I want to thank you ladies for being here. It's been an absolute delight to speak with you all. A great, great conversation. I hope listeners took away some some, uh, important tips. And uh, folks, you want to be sure to join me tomorrow at 11 o'clock. We will have Dr. Polly Heil Mealy in the house. Uh, We're going to be continuing our conversation on some of the superbugs and some of the things happening out there in the world of health. And then we'll be back next week with another episode of Natural Nation. Stay tuned for Mr. Ralph Cooper here on Sports Wrap.
The views and opinions expressed on KYND 1520 Talk programs are those of the host, guest, and callers and are not necessarily those of this station, its owners, management, other hosts, or advertisers. Show topics on this station may include conversations on any lifestyle, belief, religion, political affiliation, or other personal practices. KYND, a Synergy Broadcasting Company.